hello everybody now in this tutorial we will be learning about the two dimensional flood analysis in HECRAS so let's get started we are not using the HEC GRAS or the TEEN for analysis we will be using the RAS mapper so first of all let me create a project file go to file and new project give the name then uh, the system uh, mapper uh, the most uh, important thing before uh, uh, using RAS mapper is we have to assign the uh, projection system appropriate projection system uh, which is very important so go to tools set projection of the project and uh, you just give the location of that uh, projection file you can easily find your projection file in uh, the GIS files or you can download the projection file make sure it has the extension dot uh, PRZ so okay I have this prison system uh, WGS 1984 UTM zone 44 N after that click on OK so now we have set our projection system the next thing what we want to do is we want to have the terrain uh, of the area of which we are working on so in order to uh, develop the terrain just first of all select the terrain layer okay then right click on it and there are two options either we can create a new rust terrain or add the existing rust terrain uh, so first of all let's create a new rust terrain okay so for that uh, uh, click on this plus sign and uh, go to your location where you have that uh, the DM file okay so I have here okay so it appears you click on create now the terrain is being created okay it won't take much time it, it depends upon your DM if the DM is very large it would take much time but if the DM is uh, small then it would be completed very soon okay let's close it the next thing what we need to do uh, is we want to add the map layers right uh, so we want to add uh, Google Earth image of our map layer so right click on the map layer and add wave imagery layer so you can see uh, Google satellite okay double click on it there you go you can see the Google satellite image of the selected region this is automatically zoomed to dam area so this is the area i'm working on okay so here's the river uh, there's the river flowing the settlements the hills okay there are two ways to insert uh, the river geometry uh, you can directly close the region within the ras mapper or you can go to geometric editor so there is edit geometric data and so you can see in the geometric data this uh, terrain map appears automatically or you can try to see google earth image okay here you go so it's it's there so there are two ways to enclose the boundary so we need to uh, enclose the river area uh, in 1d we used to uh, digitize the bank lines center lines and create the cross sections and analyze but in two dimensional analysis we enclose the area okay we consider that the river flows in two direction so for that we need to create 2d polygons go to 2d flow area you can click there and start marking your uh, flow area say uh, I do like this you just keep in enclosing your uh, river area so it de depends upon what is the area or uh, to what extent you want the result so there are several factors so give the name say river what you should be aware is that always enclose uh, the potential area of the river inundation and not more not less because if the uh, two dimensional area is larger then there would be more polygons there would be more cells and the computer needs to perform uh, analysis in each and every cell so it uh, consumes time 
and uh, the result might not be stable so for that purpose uh, make sure that you enclose the uh, uh, river area not more and not less so this is how you uh, enclose the river area so next step what you do is you click on this edit 2d flow area we are going to edit 2d flow area and we are going to create the mess so you go to generate computational points okay so spacing is like uh, so what what how to what is the dimension of the cell you want it could be say 50 by 50 or 100 by 100 it is the dimension of the individual cell so the smaller the cell the finer the result but understand that uh, smaller the cell size means it there will be greater number of cells and it would take a longer time for the computer to process so uh, you have to add the spacings appropriately as per your study area as per the uh, requirement so for this purpose I am just trying uh, 70 by 70 and leave this, this shift generator points to just as it is and click on generate points into the flow area okay so you can see this uh, this mesh contains 571 cells of the given size okay we click in okay keep in mind that greater the number of cells means it would take more time for computer to analyze because uh, the analysis works by uh, working on every cell so greater the number of cell the more time it takes and also the, the finer it could be so uh, it's all up to your choice okay so the next step we do is we apply the boundary condition okay go to this boundary condition uh, icon and start clicking so uh, I'm clicking here okay double click when you are over give name so this is my upstream so I'm giving it name upstream okay and in the downstream we'll be giving another boundary okay and click here and just like this double click when finished okay let's give a name downstream okay so file you save the geometry file okay name any file say uh, geo or whatever you want okay I've already told you that it could be done within RAS mapper also uh, not a big deal okay after we are done with the boundary conditions let's go to RAS mapper and when you uh, check on geometries and when it's a 2d flow areas there you go that our flow area has been enclosed okay this is our uh, working area and these are the cells you can see them right so if you want to edit the flow area you can edit it uh, just go to perimeter right click on it and edit geometry so by doing that you can add new points or you can you know move the points you can enclose as per your necessity make sure that uh, you always space for the river to inundate okay and don't give unnecessary area because that would increase the number of cells and it would take much time for the analysis so uh, that's how we do after you have finished just right clicking on it and stop editing and yes okay there we go so our study area has been enclosed uh, so the next step what we do is uh, we define the boundary conditions okay for that go to edit and go to on city flow data see uh, the two the two conditions appear automatically one is downstream and upstream in the upstream we want uh, the flow hydrograph no so it depends upon what sort of data do you have if you have the stage hydrograph or normal depth or even rating curve in the upstream then you can choose any one of the option uh, if you have the flow hydrograph then you can go to the flow hydrograph okay so I'm going to flow hydrograph 
within the flow header graph uh, uh, there is option of you know, uh, applying the uh, hydrograph so it's your choice what sort of hydrograph do you have one hour hydrograph or two hour hydrograph and you can give a time a particular time say uh, 3 June 2020 and hour is 000, 000. And you can put some random values say 0 or 50 or uh, 70 then 90 and 150 or something like that or 200 and 500 and if you interpolate the missing values then it automatically interpolates the values okay and the next step is we need to define the uh, easy slope let's say in this case we 0.15 you can measure it you can uh, plot the profile and measure it uh, just for the sake of convenience I am using 0.15 has the value ok so this is our flow hydrograph for the downstream condition I will be using the normal depth and say 0 0.05 something like that click ok and save the on CD data let's see on CD click on ok so the next step what we do is we go to the RAS mapper we right click on 2D flow area and we compute 2D flow area hydric table ok the hydric table is created what we do next is we run the data okay to run just go to run go to on steady flow analysis so uh, in this on flow analysis you have to put the very same data the very same starting date uh, that you had entered earlier so for that i have to check it here okay so i have a graph it's here the starting date is something like that okay 0 to June 2020 and starting time is 2400 okay ending time uh, ending time is 3rd June 2020 and end time would be 1900 okay the next step is selecting the appropriate computational interval so th there are four intervals computation interval hydro out interval mapping out interval and detail out interval uh, we focus most on computational interval and these factors these intervals decide the stability of the model it's all about the trying testing is all uh, heat and trial method you keep on trying with one computation interval and test the result uh, then uh, see whether the model is stable or not and accordingly change it for the sake of convenience I am uh, say using one minute and higher order interval is in uh, what time do we need uh, that output so for that sake I am saying one hour and mapping out interval is in what interval would it map the uh, data so I will be doing one hour okay after all, uh, all the information is given just click on these options and click compute